Shalom Chavrim, I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching the Noon Institute of Biblical Research. And friends, this evening, I wanted to take a few moments of your time and share with you some incredible insights that the Lord has given me over the years here about the identity of the Messiah. More particular, I want to share this message with my Jewish brothers and sisters in Israel. So if you happen to have Jewish friends that you know, that you've been trying to witness to them about Yeshua to be the Mashiach, share with them this broadcast. In fact, I'm going to be doing more and more of these broadcasts here, maybe even running them on Israeli News Live. Now, this particular broadcast won't air on Israeli News Live, but I'm really feeling compelled to want to try to shake my own people to recognize that Yeshua indeed was the Messiah. Looking at those signs that we have overlooked, things that were written throughout the entire canon of our prophets of old, they clearly identified how we should know the Mashiach, how we should know the Messiah when he comes. Those things that we have overlooked, and one of those is very dear to my heart, and that's when we see that Yeshua himself and Matthew at the crucifixion, when they plated that crown of thorns and put it on his head. So friends, let me share with you the prophecy right here, or actually the fulfillment of prophecy, and then we're going to go back and we're going to look at the prophets of old with Moses, with Hosea, with Solomon, with Joshua, and look at the things that were written by them that clearly identified that our Messiah, who he was, and that he was on his way. Look at it right here. When we read over here in Matthew 28, and they stripped him, verse 28, and put on him a scarlet robe. And when they had plaited a crown of thorns, they put it upon his head and a reed in his right hand, and they bowed the knee before him and mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews. And they spit upon him and took the reed and smote him on the head. And of course, when we think about the spitting on him, I cannot help but think immediately about the Benjamite, Shemai that spit on David and his men when they were leaving the city. And I'm going to go into a lot of them, friends. Let me tell you something. My Jewish brothers and sisters that, that are listening here, and I say Jewish, I realize that I have Israelite brothers and sisters all over the world. Jews are normally representation of the house of Judah, but we are Israelites all over the world. And I know it's a blessing to my brothers, both Christian, both non-Christian alike, both those that are the tribe of Judah as well as the tribe of Levi, the tribe of Benjamin, which make up the house of Judah. But wherever this may be a blessing, may I trust that God will bless your ears, that he will give you ears to hear and eyes to see these thorns that are hidden within the word of God. Let's move over to the book of Exodus here, starting with verse 2 and chapter 3 here. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush, and he looked and behold, the bush burned with fire, and the bush was not consumed. And Moses said, I will turn aside now and see this great sight, why the bush is not burned. And when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, God called unto him out of the midst of the bush and said, Moshe, Moshe, Ve'yomer. And Moshe answered, Ve'yomer hineni. Behold, here I am. Now, I want to back up just a little bit here, and we're going to look at this in the Hebraic language right here for you here. All right? All right? Where we get the very word for the Sinai Desert right here. All right? So, God appears. We put on there the angel of the Lord because the Melech, see, the Melech, that would be angel or anointed one, see, anointed one. And he saw the angel of the Lord, Eliav, okay, Belibat Eish Metoch Hasanai, which appeared the fire in the middle of this bush. But the Sinai is not just any kind of bush. Sinai is a thorn bush. 
And what's interesting is that in the midst of the bush, the angel of the Lord appears there, all right? And behold, the bush burned with fire, or in fire, and the bush was not consumed. It was not eaten up. All right, now watch what happens though. And Moses says, I will turn aside to see this sight, this incredible sight. That's the incredible sight. Madua, why? Madua lo, why not? It does not. Iba'ar hasene, why is it not consumed? And here's what's interesting. You got to really watch this and think about Yeshua on the cross, right? Because when he put the crown of thorns on him and they put him on the cross, right? And it says here, and when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, ooh, this is getting good, friends. And God called from the midst of the bush to Moses. When Yeshua was on the cross, he was in the midst of the thorn bush. And he spoke and he cried out from the midst of that thorn bush. God calls from the midst of the thorn bush. And the very words that were happening to Moses here in Exodus chapter 3 is a foreshadowing of the coming of the Messiah. The angel, when it says the angel of the Lord, or the angel of uh, Yahweh, however you want to say the divine name, all right? The angel is the form, that is the fire that God had taken on because it was God that spoke from the midst of the bush. And Yeshua was the Son of God or the body in which God himself was pleased to dwell in. Interesting, wasn't it? Now, I'm going to show you some more prophecies about the same thing. Let's go over to Joshua. Now some of these, in King James, it may be a verse or two off, something like that. I'll try to tell you if I know it for sure. Let's look here, verse uh, 12. This is in Joshua chapter 23. Else if you do in any wise go back and cleave unto the remnant of this nations, even these that remain among you, and make marriages with them, and go in unto them, and they to you, know for certainty that the Lord your God will no more drive these nations from out of your sight. He was prophesying of Rome. See? God knowed. That Israel was going to make a covenant with Rome one day under the Maccabees. And think the Maccabees did a great thing? They only did a great thing when they liberated the temple. But when they made a covenant with Rome, just like Shimon Perez and, and Benjamin Netanyahu did today, that is not of God. But let me tell you something. Netanyahu ain't got a whole lot of choice in the matter. Why? Because the stage is being reset like it was 2,000 years ago. That's why he's doing it. Yeshua, when he was here, Rome was in control. They had a Roman governor over the city of Jerusalem. You don't think that they're not going to give the old city to the Vatican? Sure they are. They're going to have a Roman governor once again. You don't think that, why do you think they let the United States military inside of Israel? Because we had a Roman military there 2,000 years ago. In America, I hate to say it, my brothers and sisters that fight in the military, I love you. I appreciate your fighting for freedom of our country, but you are also fighting the Pope's wars as well. And we put our military in Israel, we put in there the Roman military. What does he say here, though, for the Jewish people to know something, though? Know for a certainty that the Lord your God will not drive, no more drive these nations from out of your sight, but they shall be what? A snare and a trap unto you and a scourge in your side. That was Yeshua. 
Yeah, you let him beat him, scourged him in his sides, not just one, but both sides, and pricks in your eyes. Do you know that word there is thorns in your eyes? Because they had put the crown of thorns upon him until you perish from off this good land which the Lord your God hath given you. And it was after the crucifixion of Yeshua that within a short period of time that Israel was driven from off the land. Prophesied again through the book of Joshua about the crown of thorns. Let's move over to Solomon in the Song of, so uh, Song of Solomon. The Song of Songs the Jews call it here. Uh, Shir Hashirim. I am the rose of Sharon, the lily of the valleys. Everybody knows that applies to Yeshua, right? What does it say here? As a lily among thorns, so is my love among the daughters. He was, excuse me, he was the lily, wasn't he? And that lily was where? Among the thorns. Hmm. You know, actually, it literally says Bain in between the thorns. Bain. And Yeshua wore that crown of thorns. He was in between all those thorns as they crushed it upon his head. And, and you know, friends, in closing, I share one more with you, and that's in the book of Hosea. Now, if you're following in the King James Version, it's chapter 2, verse 6. If you're following here uh, in the in the Mamre online, uh, the mechonmamre.org, theirs is chapter uh, 2, verse 8, but I'm going to start with verse 7. For their mother hath played the harlot. She hath conceived them and hath done shamefully for she said I will go after my lovers there's Rome for you that give me my bread and my water my wool and my flax mine oil and my drink yeah Rome has made you a very wealthy nation and, and uh, don't, don't think it's the United States we're just a military wing as Dr. Steve Pigeon said in the broadcast the other day, I don't know if I loaded that part yet, but I still got one more part to go. Uh, he talked about how that uh, the crown, the United States, and the Vatican all work hand in hand. The Vatican is a religious entity, but they're the head of the crown. The crown has swore allegiance to defend the church. And of course... The United States is the military arm and, and, and the British crown is the financial arm. And yeah, our taxes go to Rome. Don't kid yourself. Therefore, behold, I will hedge up thy way with thorns and I will make a wall against her that she shall not find her paths. What did Yeshua say? You have eyes and cannot see. What did he also say? I am the truth, the way, and the life. And no man can come to the Father except by me. And what did God say because of the evil that she would do, that Israel would do? He says, I will hedge up your way with thorns, and I will make a wall against her that she shall not find her paths. My Jewish brothers and sisters, have we missed the Mashiach? I say we have. I know some of you don't like it when I get yelling and stuff. I apologize, but I just, I get under such an inspiration. I can't control and just maintain silent. Maybe just turn the volume down. Might make it easier. But our way was hedged up with thorns because of idolatry, because of adultery. The Lord wanted us a pure people. But don't worry. We have an opportunity yet again today. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching the Noon Institute of Biblical Research. I trust this is a blessing to you. And if it is a blessing to you, share it with your friends. Share it with any Jewish person that you know so that people can see, so our Jewish brothers and sisters can recognize who their Messiah is. Shalom, and God bless you. Visit our website, IsraeliNewsLive.org, and if you'd like to help support the broadcast, we thank you for that as well. Good evening. <laughs>